said this is a miracle. Isn't that a miracle? It will happen. I said it will happen. The miracle of conversion, the miracle of change of heart and change of life. I'm looking at chapter 7, verse 59. Chapter 7 of Acts, verse 59. And the stone stealing, calling upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. What a great miracle this is. Look up for a moment. Somebody has just insulted you. Just an insult. Called you names and whatever. And then it pinched you to your very heart. And you say, this is terrible. Then maybe you even cried about it. And then when you saw that person the following day, to even say good morning. How, how are you? Very difficult. And the fellow comes and is it because of what happened yesterday. Forgive me now to be to be grace to forgive you that word is still in my heart is still in my mind and for three months you're still thinking about that you're still ruffled and you're still unhappy because of the thing that was said look at this man people taking up stones stoning him every part of his body and he was dying and yet he said lord i forgive them lay it not to their child that is a great miracle for you to have a forgiving spirit that the people that have offended you, no matter what they have done, very heavy thing, stones of criticism, and stones of condemnation, and stones of crushing that crushed your life and made you to be almost like a nobody, to crush life out of you, crush confidence out of your life, and yet you say, Lord, I forgive, because God forgive me, I forgive that man. That is a miracle as you are there tonight and you know you're thinking about your husband that man maybe in your heart you say that wicked man that rascal that drunkard that, that womanizer see what she, he has done see this series he has let me you know taking care of all these children and here i am i will never forgive that man and when you get a miracle tonight forgiveness will just come to your heart then you invite the man back and say now nah, everything is all over i forgive you and the man is still doubting. Then you cook the best meal you ever can cook and then you give it to him. You give him whatever it is that you have. He says, now I believe Christ is real. When you forgive people in your heart, you know, it's a miracle. People don't know. They think it's only when blind eyes are opened and when the limbs are jumping up. They think that's the only time you receive a miracle. But when somebody has offended you so much like this, they even want to kill you and destroy you. And you're not praying for fire to come down on them, for God to destroy them, or for your enemies to die. I just say, Lord, forgive them. That is a great miracle. I'm showing you this in the Bible so that your understanding of miracles will expand. You will know that it's not just this little thing or just this isolated thing. Miracles are everywhere in the Bible. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 5. Acts chapter 8, verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did for clean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken were possessed and that were lame were healed. Healing and deliverance. I'm sure you know that's a miracle. I said that's a miracle. Now the greatest of the miracles, the greatest of them all, Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 1. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the priests. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? This man surrendered to Christ. So, of all people, he became converted, born again, and saved. I say, this is the greatest miracle of all. I say, this is 
miracle of all. Well, the blind man that got healed, I don't know him. He has not influenced my life. And then the lame man that got up on the, you know, at the beautiful gate, well, I thank God for him, but his miracle was just for him. Just didn't touch my life. And then all these other people I read about, the miracles, that's great, but what did it do to me? But look at Saul, Saul of Tarsus. He became changed. He became an apostle. And then people were even surprised. He even suffered for Christ and he preached everywhere. And he has written all these epistles, Romans, Corinthians, Thessalonians, Philippians. He's written this and then he's still benefiting the world today. And I say the conversion of Paul the Apostle is the greatest of all the miracles in the New Testament. That's a great miracle. When God takes a man and then he turns him, not only to become a believer, but to become a minister of the gospel. And that minister of the gospel reaches out to families and to cities and to nations and to generations of people. That is the greatest miracle of all. And when your child gets converted today, that's a great miracle. When your wife gets born again tonight, that's a great miracle. And when you come and you give your life to Christ, and then God takes hold of your life. And what you couldn't have done in 50 years, in one single year, God does that through your life. I say that is a great miracle. Now we understand what miracles are. We know it's not limited to just one thing or two things. We know that's a general thing. Many great things happening in our lives. And you know it's going to happen today. I, now number two, number two, the promise of miracles. You have a promise. Whatever your area of need, spiritual, professional, your workplace, your family, your body, anything, the Lord has given you a promise and you are going to have that promise fulfilled tonight in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 verse 21. Acts chapter 2 verse 21. The promise of miracles. In verse 21 it says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now the word saved means that you are forgiven. Means that you are saved from sin, saved from perdition, and saved from punishment, and saved from eternal judgment. In Second Peter chapter two, chapter one, verses three and four, according as His divine power has given unto us all things, this is a great promise. He has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and to godliness through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and to virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. He has given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. That means then, whatever promise you need for your personal life, for your spiritual life, for your professional life, any area of your life, these promises cover them. And then it says uh, that we might be partakers of the divine nature. That is, we have these promises of God and he actually gives us his very nature. The nature of God. That nature of God, you may not understand, is greater and higher than the nature of man. Greater and higher than the nature of evil spirits. And if you have any challenge with any human weakness or demonic spirit, that nature of God in you will crush out all those negative powers in Jesus' name. Then if you have a problem living a righteous life, the nature of God in you will just help you. It becomes like second nature to you. And then you are able to live a life free from sin and free from reproach, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. In Jeremiah chapter 33, Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, the Lord said in that verse 3, he said, call unto me. That means to pray. Tonight you are going to pray. And if you have never had your prayers answered tonight, God will answer your prayer. Call unto me, and I, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. I will show you, I'll reveal to you, I'll give you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Are you getting ready for it? The Lord will show it to you. And you are going to receive it in Jesus' name. You will have it. 
Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 39. For the promise is unto you. The promise is unto me. I said it's unto me. I have a promise tonight. And I'm going to claim that promise. The promise is unto you and to your children. And to them that are far off. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. The Lord is calling you. And you are going to answer. And the moment you answer the call of God. The promise of God will become effective in your life. He says the promise is unto you. Remember when we are going to pray. That whatever challenge you have. Whatever problem you have. Spiritual, physical, natural. Whatever it is. You have a promise. And this is particularly for you. And the Lord is going to solve that problem tonight. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. Let us hold fast. What are you holding fast to? The profession. That's what you just said now. That the promise is unto me. The promise of salvation is mine. The promise of healing is mine. Hold on to that profession. The promise of deliverance is mine. Hold on to that profession. And the promise of prosperity and provision, that's mine. The promise of overcoming all the challenges of my life, that's mine tonight. The promise of the power of the Holy Ghost in my life to crush out any other power, that's mine tonight. And the promise of having all my needs met, God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That promise is unto you. And it says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith because he is faithful that promised. Now, I come to point number three. And uh, I saved uh, much time for this point number three because this is the real thing. This is the thing you really need. And point number three, do you remember what point number three is all about? What's that? Tell me. Oh, you got it already. The push for miracles. The push for miracles. I'm going to read a verse of scripture to you. And you'll find the word there, push. But I need to explain to you eventually. In um, Deuteronomy chapter 33. Deuteronomy chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 13. So you see the name of the person that did the pushing here. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 13. And, jo and of Joseph he said, Blessed of the Lord, blessed of the Lord, be his land. Blessed of the Lord be his land. What's the name of the person here? The name? Joseph. Let's look at verse 16. For the precious things of the earth and fullness thereof, and for the good will of him that dwelt in the bush, let the blessing come upon the head of Joseph. So the blessing is coming upon, it said, verse 17, his glory is like the firstling of his bullock, and his horns are like the horns of the unicorns. With them he shall, with them he shall, with them he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth, to the ends of the earth. Hold on to that. In Psalm 44, Psalm 44, I'm reading verses 4 and 5. Psalm 44, verses 4 and 5. Thou art my king, O God, command deliverances for Jacob. Deliverances have come for you. Through, the, through thee we will push down our enemies. Through thee, through the name of the Lord, the strength of the, the power of the Lord, we will do what? Push down the enemies. Now, I'm using that word push, P-U-S-H. Number one, pray, that's for P, until, that's for you, something, that's S, happens, that's H. P-U-S-H, pray until something happens. That means you are not going to give up. You are going to be like Jacob and you say, huh, this weekend I'm in for miracle. Miracle will run after me. I will catch the miracle. I pursue it and I possess it. 
How am I going to do that? It's through the push, the push for miracles. And number one, you pray until something happens and something will happen. In Jeremiah chapter 29, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 12. Jeremiah 29, we're reading from verse 12. It says, Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. The Lord has given us the assurance, you will pray, and I will listen to you, I will answer your prayer, therefore you push. What does that mean? Pray until something happens. Number two, plead until something happens. Plead. You see, when you come before the Lord tonight, you bring your reasons before the Lord, and push means now plead until something happens. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. I'm reading from verse 26. Plead. Keep on pleading. Oh Lord, you must do this for me. Because of your only begotten son, you must do this for me. Because Jesus died for me on the cross of Calvary, you must do this for me. Because you promised me and you cannot fail, you must do this for me. Because you invited me to come and then you say you'll take all my sorrow, away, all my sufferings, all my sicknesses away, you must do this for me. What are you doing? You're pleading and you keep on pleading until something happens. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 26 43 verse 26 put me in remembrance let us plead together declare thou that thou mayest be justified declare thou that thou mayest be justified the lord himself invited you say come and plead with me and tell me reasons why i should do this for you push for miracles push now number three persevere until something happens persevere until something happens you see there are some people that just pray a little and then they give up they say well maybe god is not interested in blessing me well i will not give up i said i will not give up you persevere you persist until something happens acts of the apostles chapter 12 acts chapter 12 I'm reading from verse 5, Acts 12, 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison, and prayer was made without ceasing of the church. That's perseverance. Prayer was made without ceasing. They kept on praying, kept on praying, kept on praying unto God for him. Verse 6. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chairs and the keepers before the door kept the prison peter was in the prison and herod said tomorrow morning i'm going to take that man and cut his head off i'm going to disturb the church and i'm going to take the leader away i'll, I'll kill him and nobody will be able to touch me and the church kept on praying they kept on praying and the time was going because Peter was to come out of that place the following day and then he'll be killed. But the church never gave up. They said, this one, we're going to win the victory. This one, Peter, our leader, is going to come out of this prison. And he came out. And you will come out. I said you will come out. 